Hey, it's Darius. So much effort and energy go into each I-75 video, but it's all worth it that I-75 made the difference for you. What do we have to know about variable interest entities? So a variable interest entity is a company in which an investor holds a controlling interest that is not based on the majority of voting rights. And that should get your eyebrows up. So what's the controlling interest based on? It's based on contractual agreements rather than who owns the most shares directly. The VIE model was developed in response to corporate scandals such as Enron, where corporations used special purpose entities to hide debt and inflate profits. Now the VIE model applies when the investing company's interest in the variable interest entity meets the criteria for being what's called the primary beneficiary. The primary beneficiary of a VIE is the entity that has a majority of the risk of loss from the VIE's activities, or they have the right to receive a majority of the VIE's residual returns after costs and liabilities have been met. In other words, the primary beneficiary is the entity that is exposed to a majority of the economic risks and rewards associated with the VIE, but not necessarily the largest stockholder. For example, if a parent company sets up a VIE for a specific project and agrees to absorb any losses from the project, it could be seen as the primary beneficiary because it is absorbing the majority of the expected losses, even though it may not be the largest stockholder. Similarly, if there's an agreement that states that the parent company will receive the majority of any profits after costs have been paid, it would also be considered the primary beneficiary due to the majority of expected residual returns, even though they're not the largest shareholder. How does consolidation apply to all this? Well, the primary beneficiary is required to consolidate the variable interest entity's financial statements with its own. This means that the primary beneficiary must report the VIE's assets, liabilities, income, and expenses as if they were its own, which can reveal obligations that might otherwise be hidden in off-balance sheet entities. Let's try this question. A variable interest entity is characterized by what? A, a company controlled through voting rights. No, A is wrong. While most companies are controlled through voting rights, the variable interest entity model is an exception to that. B, a company in which an investor holds a controlling interest not based on the majority of voting rights. Yeah, that sounds good. C, a company that has no voting rights. No. D, a company in which an investor holds a minority interest. No. The term minority interest means non-controlling interest. So don't pick D. B looks good because a VIE is a company in which an investor holds a controlling interest that is not based on the majority of voting rights. What's it based on? The controlling interest is based on contractual agreements. Letter B is correct. And that might be the only question they even ask you on variable interest entity. Which of the following is the reason behind the introduction of the variable interest entity concept? A, to facilitate international mergers and acquisitions. No, definitely not because IFRS doesn't even recognize the variable interest entity concept. Only US GAAP has it. So international mergers would not be a reason for the VIE concept. B, to allow companies to hide liabilities in off-balance sheet entities. No, do you really think that the FASB wants companies to hide liabilities in off-balance sheet entities? No. C, to prevent companies from hiding liabilities in off-balance sheet entities. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. D, to standardize the accounting practices across different countries? No, because we said IFRS, the International Financial Standards, they don't even recognize the VIE concept. So C is the best answer. The reason behind the introduction of VIE by FASB is to prevent companies from hiding liabilities in off-balance sheet entities. Which of the following statements is true regarding a primary beneficiary? A, the primary beneficiary of a VIE is the party that absorbs a minority of the entity's expected losses? No. B, the primary beneficiary of a VIE is the party that receives a minority of the entity's expected residual returns? No. C, the primary beneficiary of a VIE is the party that absorbs a majority of the entity's expected losses, 
receives a majority of its expected residual returns or both. Yeah, that sounds good. D, the primary beneficiary of a VIE is the party that owns the majority of the voting rights in the VIE. Definitely not. Letter C is correct. The primary beneficiary of a VIE is the party that absorbs a majority of the entity's expected losses, receives a majority of its expected residual returns, or both. All right, what does consolidation of a variable interest entity involve? And if you think you know, leave me the answer in the comments section. And then go to cpaexamtutoring.com and get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark. Click CPA Review and then one part, and then far course, because the right teacher makes all the difference.